Hey everyone, I'm Rich. I want to give you guys my review of the Samsung Galaxy S23 as it's shaping up to be a really promising smartphone considering its price right now. At first glance, the S23 design has got to be something that I think is kind of underlooked. Basically the size, grip, and weight feels amazing every time I use this phone. If I'm lying on my bed or on a long phone call with someone, the phone feels very balanced and soft to the touch. I also don't feel like it's poking my palm or weighing me down compared to flagship phones like the S23 Ultra, the 14 Pro Max. This phone comes in at 168 grams. Additionally, it makes it very easy to whip this phone out of your pocket and put it back quick. It can fit in a lot of people's purses or backpacks. A lot of my friends have said this is like the perfect size for a smartphone, especially how today uh, phones seem just to be getting bigger and bigger. The S23 took out this small indent from last year's S22 model and made the triple camera system just clean and flush with the whole backplate of the phone. This looks very classy in my opinion, but one drawback is that it traps a lot of dust and Especially, yeah, if you have a case on here, those particles will inevitably fall into those cracks and just get around the corners of the cameras. I find myself getting a little Q-tip and just wiping it off every so often. All the S23 models, including this phone, is rocking the nicely textured Gorilla Glass Victus 2 on both sides. I find this phone to be very durable, largely on the back of the phone, as its matte textured glass hardly attracts any fingerprints or feels oily over time. It does a really good job of hiding it. It feels really nice to touch. And overall, it's just a really great feeling phone. It's really just little things that make the phone all the more better, in my opinion. The S23 is still rocking the same 6.1 inch display from last year's model, except it can get to a max peak brightness of 1750 nits, which you can't even get on the iPhone unless you go Pro or Pro Max. 1750 gets bright. I mean, you can turn this on by turning off adaptive brightness and turning on extra brightness. I mean, using this outside during the daytime makes it very usable. You know, like when the sun is like kind of shining down on your screen and you really can't see if the display is good. Well, as you can tell right here, the screen brightness, it's, it's, it's holding its own. Now, let's not forget about the elephant in the room, the uh, buttery smooth 120 hertz screen. Now, this is a real treat to look at. Scrolling across the UI, web, or social media looks and feels nimble. Colors look exceptionally vibrant on display as in using a DCI P3 color space rather than the sRGB color range. So any HDR content on here looks fantastic. If you're reading some content or playing games in S23, you're going to be delighted here. So on to the more interesting part in this video, in my opinion, is the performance. And let me tell you guys, this phone is packing some serious power. The entire Galaxy S23 lineup, including this phone, uses the same Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset, uh, a slightly higher overclocked version for both a CPU and GPU to be exact along with a whopping 8GB of RAM on their new generation of memory chips. 8GB uh, is already massive enough for a phone at this price and design, so I have little to no worries that this phone will be able to plow through any games and apps that you throw at it. At this moment, I don't see any AI or augmented reality app that's going to require more memory, so I think the big takeaway here is that this phone is really here to stay. I mean, technically, this may be the fastest smartphone out right now, potentially beating the Apple A16 chip. You can look at those CPU benchmarks on there. Um, I think it's only beating it by like a few hairs here, but like, those numbers, they, they really don't mean much for the average person and just for me. Really though, while navigating across the UI, you can definitely notice the speed that's coming out of this. Clicking on apps and videos load up almost instantaneously. I had no trouble waiting for things to buffer or load, other than maybe if you, uh, you know the Wi-Fi was slow sometime, which has no effect on the hardware itself. But in gaming, the new Qualcomm chip is able to power through graphically intense games and remains relatively stable past half an hour. I mean, this phone started just to get slightly warm, but nothing like hot to the touch. We'll get into the camera test soon, but just simply scrolling across the modes and adjusting the capture settings it is extraordinarily snappy. The only other time you may see some lag is if you're shooting on portrait mode, but that's just because the photo is post-processing or something like that. And with a 3900 milliamp battery, I was able to get a whopping 8 to 11 hours of phone use from 100% all the way down to zero. I was using my phone for one and a half hours to three hours per day. That was for three days. I didn't charge it until obviously the third day I, I charged it to full. A full charge for me was no longer than an hour and a half from zero to 100, which is terrific. Following the charge, I went ahead and shot a bunch of photos and videos, you know, playing games as you can see with all these clips here uh, I was able to get around a good six to eight hours but that's like after putting this phone through its paces a long battery indeed I mean I have no worries that this battery will hold up for years to come like I said don't let that six to eight hours fool you I was really just stress testing this a lot I was realistically getting it around like eight to eleven and you could probably get a little bit longer if you turn some settings off and disable some features which I'm not too quite sure of right now of course this isn't the whopping 200 megapixel camera that you would get on the ultra and you know for a lot of people that's fine saving the extra $400 and reducing size and weight may be worth it for most people 
You still do get that classic triple camera setup, the 10 megapixel three times telephoto, 12 megapixel ultra wide, and 50 megapixel main camera with great optical image stabilization. I mean, this phone takes great pictures. With sunnier conditions, the camera and Samsung's imaging software consistently captures sharp photos without surprisingly too much sharpness, which we all know is a recent phenomenon now with all the flagship smartphones uh, just over sharpening their photos. I don't know why. The colors coming out of these photos look rather vibrant, and I think it's safe to say that they blended the right amount of contrast while preserving both shadow and highlight details. Portrait mode gives us a lot of options to post process the image for ourselves and allowing us to blur out what we need to blur and at nighttime the camera also does a pretty decent job letting in a lot of light. I'll let you see the results for yourself. You can shoot 8K 30 frames per second videos, which is very intense uh, on this device. I found that the battery did drain significantly faster, so I would only really record at 8K if I was at some super scenic area or anything like that, vacation. Literally the amount of detail you can see in the grass or the water these clips make shooting on S23 and 8K very enjoyable. Especially nice if you need to transfer these files on the big screen as 8K, you know, hoards in a ton of data. You can put this on a big ADH TV screen or zoom in however much you want and it'll still preserve the details. Majority of the other times that I'll be shooting in 1080p 30 frames per second just to save space and if I was shooting a video of my night out with friends or a short clip of something, I I think 8K is a little excessive, but the option is definitely there. Really though, the most impressive thing I've seen from this camera is the stabilization. I mean, Samsung did a great job here, really giving us something that's exceptionally smooth. Sometimes I really don't think I need a stabilize or anything like that, just holding my hand just the way it is and capturing video. You can even see here that I'm riding my electric skateboard through campus and the skateboard should be vibrating a lot. My, you know, body is like kind of going up and down, but the S23 is doing a great job just holding that. Overall, the S23 doesn't sound like a huge jump over last year's S22 model, and to be quite honest, uh, it really isn't. Some people may not need to upgrade at all, and that's fine. I personally wouldn't feel like this phone has enough new features for me if I was an S23 user, but I think if you're someone that has an S21 and below, uh, I think these are actually enough options to upgrade. Or if you're an iPhone person thinking about getting to the world of Android, uh, hey, this, this could be the switch. I think the S23 is probably the best valued phone right now as it's packing a lot in this design. I personally think that this is coming up to be one of the best Android phones on the market. It honestly feels great after holding something as large as the 14 Pro Max and the S23 Ultra. What you're getting with this phone is something a little bit more homebody and humble. A powerful phone in today's smartphone market. So. With that being said, uh, let me know what you think about this phone. Uh, are you looking at getting it? Do you already have it? Do you have any of the previous models before? Uh, let me know, just shoot away the questions and comments down below. I wanna hear what you guys are talking about. Um, but if you guys like this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, until then, let me know what's up.